Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be building this interactive or animating landing page using HTML, CSS and GSAP. Now this design I found on Dribbble, which is made by Anna Sankova. So I made her another design in the last video. So if you haven't checked that out, please make sure to check out the video. And also I'll add the link to her profile and also this design. She has some amazing designs. If I reload the page, you see this heading kind of fades in and then also this image and then the footer underneath here. So all these images kind of stagger and then enter one after the another. So we're going to be doing all this stuff using GSAP. So if you haven't watched my previous video, please make sure to watch that. So the source code of this project would be down in the description. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe the channel because I bring in every week amazing content like this. And also make sure you share the channel with your friends and family who are interested in making these amazing designs and who are interested in learning web development. So yeah, there's that. So let's get started and let's build this. So here I am in my folder, which has the name of landing 19, wherein I have a div with images, index.html file, style.css file. Now let's look at the design. So this is the design, which is designed by Anna Sankova. So my last project was also designed by her. So I found this design on her profile. You can also check her profile out. I'll add the link to her profile and also this design in the description. So you guys can check both the design and her profile. Now this is an amazing work. I like the color theme. So I was thinking let's build this and also we're going to be using a bit of GSAP so that we can have simple but styling animations. So first let's look at the structure. So First, we're going to be having a main tag, which will be holding the entire website. Then we're going to have a nav to hold the navigations, wherein we're going to be using an anchor tag with a class of logo for this, and then an anchor tag for this button, which on click will take to some different page if you want to add a different page later on. And then this section, we're going to be using a section tag. Let's say we add a class of container to that. So we have a text on the left, we have a text on the right. So these we can add probably span maybe. And then we have this big text which we can we can use h1. And then this small text maybe kind of like kind of like a subheading so we can use maybe h3 or something. And then we can have a paragraph for this content. And then we have this image. And then for this for this bottom footer section we can have uh, maybe a span to hold these numbers and then these so this is kind of like a slider wherein on clicking on these images you change this this cover image basically so as of now this is not a slider we're going to be keeping it simple so kind of like a static uh, site so no interactiveness or anything of that sort so we can have these three images wherein we set the opacity of these two as maybe 0.5 and then this one since this is the active one we can set as one now if you want a sliding version of this so that is if you want this to have a slider functionality maybe using swiper js you can comment down below and i'll make sure to build this website using swiper js as well and then at the end we can have a div wherein we have this play button and then on the background we can have the image sort of so so that's it nothing too hard so let's get started so here in the index or html okay so one more thing um the background image also if you see the image that i'm using is different so this is the image so i tried finding this exact image but i couldn't really find so yeah first let's add our style.css file since we need to link and then first let's get some cdns so we're gonna need remix icon cdn.js and let's click on the first link and let's copy this min.css file and let's paste it here now let's get gsap cdn 
click on the first link copy this and paste it okay now let's get started with the body here we're gonna start with a main tag then we're gonna have a nav a section with the class of container and then the footer and the nav we can have an anchor tag which links to this this page itself which is the logo so we're gonna add a class logo to it and then we have another anchor tag for the button so this logo we can have the remix icon of playstation and then this the button we can add a class of btn and add the text of buy now let's save and let's see okay we have the playstation logo and also the buy now button now inside of the container we're gonna have a span for the left span for right so these two text left and right so this one is special edition and this one a copyright symbol and then 2019 sony interactive entertainment llc and then we need a heading each one alpine and then the green would be in the next line so we're going to use a break tag and we can write green now for the subheading we're going to use h3 and then this code or this r that you see wrapped around a circle kind of so we use this code for that and then we write four break tag and then the rest of the subheading and then use paragraph and paste in the content let's see okay now we need to add our image is this let's save okay now in the footer we have options and also a span now these options that you see which are clickable if we had sliding option so these would act as different slide options and this one is kind of like an indicator which is indicating which slide we are currently on now as of now it is 0 1 if we click on this this is going to be 0 2 but we're not going into the detail of adding this functionality so this one we can have a span and add this here 0 1 and 0 3 and the line that you see in the middle we can add a div with the class of bar now in the options we're gonna have the first image as active since the first image would have an opacity of 1 but the rest two would have an opacity of 0 0.5 so we're gonna add the other two and then we're gonna add a div the class of video for this and then we can add the background image the play button or the play icon inside of a play div and then here we're gonna add the remix icon for this play circle let's save okay so we have our HTML ready now let's see this CSS so in the CSS I have already imported uh, Poppins and Delagosic I tried finding a font uh, like I tried finding an exact font like this but I couldn't really find uh, what they used so what I did was I used Delagosic which is kind of similar to this one and then for these text I used Poppins so first we're gonna remove the margin and padding and we're gonna set box sizing to border box and then in the body we're gonna give it height and width of 100 viewport height and 100 viewport width with overflow to hidden and then display grid place content to center so that the main tag is at the center now we're gonna set the font family to De La Gothic since most of the fonts here are De La Gothic apart from this paragraph and then this subheading and then I think also this span now we're gonna do one thing we're gonna target all the anchor tags we're gonna set text decorations to none and then we're gonna set color to inherit now what these two lines would do first one would remove the underline the second one would basically take the color of its parent and apply it to the anchor tag uh, okay 
since we have added overflow to hidden we cannot actually see um, some text I'm going to target the main I'm going to give it a height of 100 viewport height width of 100 viewport width let's save now you can see now you see that this this icon and also this button these these two are anchor tags but as of now you do not see that kind of like that bluish color that we see by default the anchor tags the color that they have now the reason for that is because now they're inheriting the color of their parent which is black by default in the main we're going to set a background url and we're going to add the image so this is the background image and we don't want this to repeat so we'll add no repeat background position y let's say 40 percent okay and then background size to cover and let's add position relative now the reason for adding position relative is because we're going to be adding a layer basically a pseudo element before so we're going to add that on top of this image so that we can have this bluish kind of effect so first let's set the color to white and then we're going to target the before pseudo selector we're going to set content to empty string then position to absolute inset to zero which is equivalent to saying height and width 100 percent and also setting top zero and left zero and then background we need a linear gradient so from top we want this bluish color but then as it comes down we kind of want it to fade okay so for that uh, let's say to bottom we have this color now this color needs to be 45 percent so we're gonna specify that this needs to have uh, effect till 45 percent and then we're gonna set another color and another let's save okay now everything is kind of blurry and we cannot see these contents since this before is on top of everything else so we need to position the other stuff using z index so we're going to target the container which holds all the text and images the nav and also the footer so we're going to give them a position relative and a z index of 10. since if you do not add this position relative the z index wouldn't take into effect all right now all the different stuff or the main content of the website is on top of the the before pseudo selector now we're going to target the nav we're going to give it a waste of 100 percent display flex and justify content to space between since uh, we want them to kind of take two edges of the screen this one and this one let's align them at the center and give a padding inline of 50 pixels logo we're gonna set font size of 40 pixels text shadow of one pixel one pixel one pixel with this rgb a value so that we kind of have a subtle uh, kind of like a border and then we're gonna target this btn we're gonna give it padding 20 pixels from top and bottom 30 pixels from left and right a background of white and a color of this font size of 14 pixels font weight bolder and word spacing to 5 pixels so we have a little bit of gap between by and then now and then we're going to add box shadow with 4 pixels 4 pixels 5 pixels and this rgba value now we're going to target the container we're going to set position relative since the main cover image would be positioned absolutely so we need this container as position relative and padding 20 pixels and 50 pixels since we want to maintain the alignment so this padding 50 pixels is the same as the inline padding of the navigations i'm going to target the h1 we're going to give it font size of 120 pixels line height of 0.9 text shadow of this and then a margin left of 100 pixels since we want this special edition to be added 
on the left so we left some empty space here and a margin top of 10 pixels and a letter spacing of 5 pixels and then we're going to target the h3 we're going to give it margin left margin top and also font family as poppins and font weight of 700 and then font size of 20 pixels Also, word spacing of 3 pixels. Now we're going to target the paragraph. We're going to give it font size of, of 13 pixels, on family of poppins, margin left 100 pixels, and margin top of 20 pixels. Also, give it a width of 30 pixels. Now, these three are aligned. Now we're going to target the image. We're going to set it top 2%, right 15%, and a rotate of 16 degrees, width of 40 viewport width, and then filter of drop shadow, since we want some shadow on the left side, and also maybe on the bottom. And we add a drop shadow, okay. And then container span so basically the special edition and also this this copyright 2019 sony interactive entertainment llc position absolute writing mode to vertical right to left and then rotate minus 180 degrees top 80 pixels and opacity of 0 0.5 okay now both of them are on the right side now we're gonna target uh, let's add this word spacing and also font size including this letter spacing and font weight to lighter now let's target the span that is on the right side which should be on the right side and then we're gonna set right to 50 pixels since this one had a gapping of 50 padding so we're gonna set this container right to have a right value of 50 pixels one family of poppins, font size of 14 pixels, a letter spacing of initial, which is the default value, and then word spacing to normal and rotate zero degrees. Okay. Now bottom 20 pixels and a top of auto. Now we're going to target the footer. We're going to set position absolute with 80%, bottom 0, left 50%, since we want the bottom to be kind of at the center. A transform translate x to minus 50% with display flex. Since the content inside of the footer, we want them to stack horizontally. And align items to center and a background of white. Now since these images are too big, you're gonna see the footer to be way too big. So let's first target the footer image, width of 140 pixels and height of 100 pixels, object fit to contain, there we have it. Now we're gonna target the span which has 01-03, we're gonna have width to 20% and height as a complete height which is 100%, display flex. Justify content center and align items to center. And the color of this, let's save. Now the bar that we had in the middle, we need to we need to give that height. So we're gonna target the span which has the bar, width and height of this, and a background color of this. Now let's target the options. Let's give it width of 75% display flex align items to center and now if you see here these contents or these um, let's say options section these option sections are kind of pushed to the right side meaning that they are having justify content to flex and margin left to auto and margin right to 20 pixels
gaff 50 pixels SR footer I'm gonna write footer options image I'm gonna write opacity of 0.5 since all the images now you see have opacity of 0.5 but then the one which has the class of active should have an opacity of 1 and we're gonna target the footer video height 200 pixels width to 300 pixels and overflow to hidden background of this and a margin block which is top and bottom 20 pixels a position relative we're gonna target the image we're gonna scale it up we're gonna rotate it minus 15 degrees and maybe transform translate it so an opacity of 0 0.3 and then the play that we had yeah so positioned absolute top 50% left 50% Transform translate minus 50% and minus 50% which brings it at the center Font size of 40 pixels Height of 30 pixels Width and display grade place content to center Since we want the icon to be at the center and then and then a border radius of 50% now keep in mind that whatever we are having here, the border radius, this height and width, this is for the container, okay? The icon itself has this has this circular uh, design and also this icon in the center. So this entire thing is the icon. But what we're doing is we're basically having the container to have width and height of 30 pixels and we're making it a circle by giving it border radius of 50%. Since we also need you see that subtle circle on the background or kind of around this this middle or um, this middle icon so we need this circle as well so to get that uh, we're going to use outline 15 pixels solid and we're going to give it this rgba value and with that we have kind of faded circle around this icon yes so we're done with the design now let's add a bit of JavaScript and make it animate. So here we're gonna add a script. We're gonna add gsap.from. Now, if you do not have any idea regarding gsap, comment down below and I'll make sure to bring a video wherein I explain what gsap is. And I'll try to make the video kind of beginner friendly so that everybody who haven't even done anything in JavaScript you also get to know what gsap is and how to use that all right so so gsap.from is basically you can think of it as something like what is your initial initial position and what is your final position so let's say when we add this from it means that our final position is what we have already defined here and then here we're going to be setting the initial position so this gsap kind of animates automatically from this initial position to the final position that we're already having here now here let's target the h1 and so this is from which means that this is the initial position so we're gonna set y to 100, 100 pixels or maybe 100 what it means is that when we let's save it and you'll see that my final position is this but since I have from Y100, what this would have is that it kind of appears to come from 100 pixels below its original position. We can add opacity and maybe a duration of one second. So you'd see that it is kind of fading from the bottom and then going to its original position, which is this. Similarly, we can do for GSAP from for the image this main cover image we can have it x value of 50 so now this time it would kind of appear to come from the uh, x axis which is from the right side and then we can have an opacity of 0.1 a duration of 0.8 seconds and then a delay of 0.2 meaning that first this first um, so first this would start and then after 0 0.0 seconds passes by this is gonna get started let's start 
You see how this text fades into its original position and then this image also kind of fades in from the right side. We can do for the footer now. We can bring in the footer from the Y. Opacity of 0. Delay. Let's save. You see how they fade in. Now we're going to target uh, this text, these images and also this video. So you're going to have footer span, options, which has all the images and then the video. So we have targeted all of them. Now what we want to do is we want X to be minus 200 and then opacity to be zero. And we have the stagger 0 0.2, meaning that so after this one, this one finishes its animation after 0.2 seconds this would start and then after this gets done after 0.2 seconds this would start and then this and then this so when you specify stagger it means that um, each of the element inside whichever you mentioned here so they kind of wait for the for the previous one to get over and then after that specific amount of time that you specify here the next one starts executing and maybe a delay of 0.4 so which means that um, after after 0.4 seconds it waits and then this would start executing this and then each element mentioned here they would kind of wait before the previous one gets executed and what time they would wait they would wait of 0.2 seconds after the previous one is done and you save you see the first one enters and then the second one and then it waits again waits and then again waits okay so yeah there's that um so i hope you like the video i hope you learned something new hope this video was helpful and the source code of this project will be down in the description so if you guys have any doubt regarding this and if you have any queries regarding the code you can comment down below and make sure to share this video with your friends and family and also with the ones who are interested in making creative designs and also animating them making them more interactive so you can share my channel and also share this video and make sure to tell them to watch the video and also don't forget to check out the source code and also i'll add the link to my previous videos if you haven't watched those you can check those out as well so thanks for watching meet you guys in the next video till then bye bye